a very good morning to all the participants of this webinar and welcome to the DTRTA national webinars today is uh, 4th of november 2020 and we are starting part 3 of the topic inventory as part of our series of bookkeeping and accountancy so friends so far so far we have studied what is the meaning of inventory and what are those things that are included in the inventory so we said that inventories are those assets which are either held for the ordinary sale in the course of the business or they are held in the process of production for sale as in the case of raw materials or they are held for consumption in the production of goods or services for sale as in the case of work in progress and they also include consumables and maintenance supplies but of course they would not include those machinery spares servicing equipment or standby equipment that are either meant for one particular asset or if they are part of the cost of any fixed asset or if their use is expected to be irregular so why inventory is important because the inventory figure the why the valuation of inventory is important because the valuation of the inventory has to be put on the credit side of the trading account and the asset side of the balance sheet and until we do that we are, we cannot prepare the financial statements So if you have to understand the importance of inventory valuation, we know that inventory valuation is important for determination of income because inventory valuation is important for determining the cost sold and cost of goods sold is the opening inventory plus purchases plus direct expenses minus the closing inventory. So if we can calculate the cost of goods sold with the help of closing inventory and other items are already known to us, then we can easily get at the cross profit. Another important thing is that inventory is important to ascertain the financial position because inventory is part of the current assets of the balance sheet and therefore a balance sheet cannot be complete unless the inventory is there so balance sheet helps us to give helps us to inform ourselves about the financial position of a, of a concern and therefore inventory valuation is important inventory valuation is also important to get an analysis of the liquidity status of a company because if it is part of the, being part of the current assets the current asset upon the current lab current liability ratio gives us a kind of uh, invent liquidity analysis as to what is the status of the net working capital of any company inventory valuation is also important because it is statutorily required as it is required under schedule 3 of the companies act is also required to be done as per the accounting standards also now when it comes to inventory valuation the very basis of inventory valuation is lower of the cost or the net realizable value we have to calculate the cost we have to calculate the net realizable value and then we have to take the lower of the two and this principle lower of the cost or net realizable value is based on the basic principle of conservative accounting 
or principle of prudence in accounting and bookkeeping. To understand what cost is, cost of inventory comprises of three elements. One is the cost of the purchase. Other is the cost of conversion from the raw material to the work in progress or to the finished goods. And thirdly, the cost incurred to bring the inventory to the present location and condition. The abnormal amounts of wasted materials, labor or other production overheads are not included in the cost of inventories. Also, those storage costs which are not part of the production process are not included in the cost of inventories. Those administrative overhead expenditures that uh, do not contribute to bringing inventory to the present location condition, they are also not included in the cost of inventories and the selling and distribution costs are also not included in the cost of inventories. Apart from the cost, we have to calculate the net realizable value. So net realizable value is an estimate of the selling price in the ordinary course of the business. And from that we have we have to reduce the estimated cost of the completion. And the estimated cost necessary to make the sale. In order to get the net realizable value. So if you have to see this definition in terms of the finished goods and traded goods. The net realizable value in case of the finished goods and traded goods will mean the selling price reduced by the selling and the distribution expenses. On the other hand, in case of work in progress, apart from the selling and the distribution expenses, we'll also have to reduce from the selling price, the expenses and overheads which are required to be incurred to convert the work in progress into the finished goods and making it ready for sale as a finished goods. So those expenses and overheads required to convert the work in progress into the finished goods and making it ready for sale are to be reduced from the selling price. And in case of raw materials, <coughs> the replacement cost of the raw material is generally considered as the net realizable value. So, on every balance sheet date for which the balance sheet is being drawn, we have to make an assessment of the cost as well as of the net realizable value. So the inventories are usually written down to the net realizable value on item by item basis. However, in some circumstances, we may group the similar or related items. For example, interchangeable items may, may be grouped together in order to identify the cost and the net realizable value. Because in case of similar items, it may not be possible to identify the cost and net realizable value for every item separately. But broadly, wherever the items are not interchangeable, item by item identification of cost and net realizable value is important. We have seen that uh, there are two types of inventory recording systems. The first system is the periodic inventory system and the second type of system to record the inventory is the perpetual inventory system. The periodic inventory system is a method in which we take the actual physical count or we take the actual physical measure or weight 
of every inventory item which is on hand on a particular date on which the inventory is valued. And it is because of the physical count that is called the physical inventory system also. So the periodic inventory system is also called the physical inventory system. Once we take the physical count measure of weight, we add up the opening inventory and purchases and reduce the physically counted closing inventory to ascertain the cost of the goods sold. Of course, we have to do the valuation. We are just coming to the valuation methods. This system is simple and less expensive than the perpetual system. In this periodic inventory system, the inventory account is adjusted at the end of the accounting period by the value of the closing inventory, which is physically taken, in order to determine what is the cost of the goods sold. But this system suffers from many limitations also. Because physical inventory that is taken every quarter or every half yearly for preparing the financial statements on a quarterly basis or, a six, or on a six monthly basis makes the physically in, uh, physical inventory system a bit cumbersome and very expensive. Moreover, the physical count requires that the normal operations of the business have to be closed down. Also, another disadvantage of this system is that uh, cost of goods sold is a figure which is calculated. Therefore, it is not possible to identify how much of the goods have been pilfered, damaged or even defrauded. In this system, inventory control is not possible. as it is clear that we can't even know how much of the goods are being pilfered or damaged. Because we are just taking inventory after a certain period of time and in between what is happening, we have no control over it. Books of accounts are not reflecting inventory in hand every time. And therefore, we cannot plan our operations as to how much should be should we order or how much should we manufacture? On the other hand, perpetual inventory system is a system where inventory balance is recorded after every receipt or every issue of any item of purchase or sale. In order to ensure accuracy, we can check our balances with the physical inventory from time to time whenever the physical inventory is taken. So the physical inventory also goes on along with the perpetual inventory system, thereby making the system a little more expensive. But this physical inventory is compared against the perpetual inventory just to ensure that our balances in the perpetual inventory are going fine. Here in this case, we are directly determining the cost of goods sold. And the inventory will be taken as a residual figure, whereas in the physical inventory system, it was the other way around. That is cost of the goods sold in that system is the residual figure or a calculated figure. And inventory is ascertained directly. But in the perpetual inventory system, the cost of goods sold is directly determined. And inventory is the residual figure with the help of the inventory ledger. In which flow of goods is recorded on a continuous basis. So in this method, the inventory ledger is maintained. Where every item of inventory, its receipt or issue is recorded in terms of the value. And finally, when we have recorded everything, 
we can calculate the closing inventory by adding the purchases to the opening inventory and reducing the cost of goods sold, which, of which we have calculated directly. And closing inventory is the balancing figure or the residual figure here. Thereafter, we have also studied various methods to determine the cost of inventory or various valuation of inventory methods. So in those methods, the first type of method was the historical cost methods and the other type of methods are the non-historical cost method. In the historical cost method, all the cost of the items which were purchased in the history or in the past history are taken into account. But in non-historical method, the, what has happened earlier is not taken into account. So under the historical cost methods, the first method is a specific identification method. Now this method is based on actual physical flow of goods. So every good or every item has an associated cost related to it. And every item is identified separately. Separate lots. And lots are created. Goods are kept in form of lots. And every lot has a certain cost associated with it. And of course, the specific purchase price or the specific production cost is taken into consideration for every lot in this case. Every lot is clearly identified, specifically identified, and its rate is clearly identified. Now, the specific identification method is generally used for those items which are not, in, not ordinarily interchangeable with each other. They are separate items, like high expensive uh, or the value is high, like expensive medical equipments. And those items which are not, which are interchangeable, can over their FIFO method or the weighted average price or the average price formula is utilized for valuation of inventory. We have also seen that the FIFO in the FIFO method it is based on the assumption that cost should be charged to revenue. In the order, cost of any item should be charged to revenue in the order in which they are incurred. So it is assumed that whichever item had come in first is taken out first or issued out first. So issue of goods is usually from the earliest lot which is on hand. So whatever inventory we are having in on hand, that is from the latest consignment received. And so the latest price is utilized to value that inventory. Then there is the LIFO method where the basic assumption is that what has come in last, that is issued first. And therefore, whatever inventory is remaining, that is to be valued at the most historical cost. Now, this being a this being a irrational assumption, we have seen that the cost of the closing inventory changes when we follow the LIFO method or perpetual inventory method and the periodic inventory method of inventory taking. So therefore, this method has been discarded by most of the accounting standards. Then there is, of course, a simple average price method where all the prices of the items are added up and divided by the number of the prices. And average is calculated of all the prices and that average is used up, is used to value the closing inventory. Thereafter, 
there is the weighted average price method where not just quantity uh, not just uh, not just price but also the quantity of the of every purchase is utilized for calculating the uh, average price so it's called the weighted average price average price which is weighted by the quantities purchased also then also we will we have studied non historical cost methods in non historical cost method there is the adjusted selling price method and the standard price method in the adjusted or the standard cost method in the adjusted selling price method uh, which is more appropriate for retail inventory or retail shop inventories and it is used widely in the retail business or in business where inventory has items has many items and fast moving items so individual cost of of which cannot be ascertained very readily items are going out large number of items are coming in large number of items are going out and they are moving fast so that is why we we say fmcg sector fast moving consumer goods so in such a case it is very difficult to keep track of every of every item price when it is coming in when it is going out unless we have sophisticated accounting systems and uh, we are making entry of every bill in very in great detail things may be coming in in the same day and getting sold on the same day itself so this method is more useful for rapidly changing items in large numbers and those items have similar kind of margins the margins are also not widely different for most of the items and therefore it is impractical to use other costing methods so in this method what we do is that we take the sales value of the inventory and from the sales value of the inventory we reduce the gross margin percentage which is an appropriate gross margin percentage an appropriate gross margin percentage can be found out in course of time and since the margins are not widely varying we can use the same gross margin percentage that is once initially calculated or computed based on the actual examples from the sale value we reduce the appropriate gross margin percentage and so for every retail item or every retail department an average percentage is often used so the method is here from the sale price reduce the gross margin percentage and when we do that we are able to find out the adjusted selling price the selling price which is adjusted by the gross margin percentage and that price can be utilized to value the inventory now we come to an, an important aspect as to of, of course to the standard cost method standard cost method means a method where items like oil where prices are changing very very fast and if the prices are changing frequently on the same day so many changes are there in the prices the best way to do is to find out a standard price or a standard cost and use that standard cost to uh, just as in crude oil to find out the inventory valuation based on that standard cost now you know <coughs> when we are, <coughs> whenever we are whenever we are actually taking inventories 
uh, normally in when we take physical inventory, all operations are suspended for one or two days during the financial year. <coughs> to take the inventory and physical inventory is taken. Uh, for everything in our go down or in the store. And this work is done on a periodical basis, say quarterly or six monthly or something like that. And when at the year end we make the inventory valuation. At that time we take the physical inventory during last week of the financial year or during the first week of the next financial year. Now let's say if the inventory is taken. On 26 March. And the accounting year is ending on 31st March. Then the purchases and the sales which are happening between 26 and 31st March are separately adjusted into the valuation. Arrived at for 26 March. So the, we, the then uh, for the inventory, we take the principle of cost or net realizable value, whichever is lower for the inventory as a whole, or it can be done on item to item basis also, wherever that is possible or feasible. Normally, enterprises will perform, will like to perform the inventory taking work on the closing day. However, sometimes it cannot be completed on the closing day or cannot be done on the closing day because it may need more than one day or so. Or sometimes due to different situations, practical situations, is it is not becoming possible to take the inventory on the last day of the financial year or last day of the year which is followed by the company. And thereby the inventory is carried out a few days either later or sometimes even a few days earlier than the closing day. So when that happens, then we have to adjust the actual value of the inventory so that uh, we relate it to the end of the year. And for doing that, it becomes necessary to take into account the goods that have come in and those that have gone out during the interval between the close of the year and the date of the actual inventory taking. Also, it has to be remembered that the adjustment of all the goods must be on the basis of cost. Now, let us say, suppose a firm closes its books of accounts on 31st December, but it carried out the inventory taking on the 7th of January next year. And it found an actual inventory of uh, was of the cost of 785,000. And during the period of January 1 to 7, it had made purchases were worth 1,53,000 and sales worth 2,50,000. And sales are normally marked up 25% on the cost. So to, ca to calculate the inventory for 31st December, because we have the firm has calculated the inventory for 7th of January. So in, in this situation, you know, if we have to calculate the inventory for 31st December or for the closing day, you have to do it like this, that uh, we start with the inventory of January 7, 785,000. From that, we reduce the purchases for the period January 1 to 7, <coughs> which is 1,53,000 in this case, and then we get a figure of 6,32,000. Then from this figure, we have to reduce the cost of the goods sold during the period January 1 to 7. So as the goods are being marked up by 25% on the cost, and the sale price is 2,50,000 for January 1 to 7, the cost of the goods sold will be 2,50,000 into 100 upon 125. 
So on this basis, we are getting a cost of goods sold of 2 lakh rupees. So we reduce the cost of goods sold from the 6 lakh 1000. Sorry, we, we add up the cost of goods sold to this 6 lakh 2000 in order to get the value of the inventory for 31st December. So the value of inventory for 31st December is 8 lakh 32,000. Whereas the value of inventory for January 7 was 7 lakh 85,000. So therefore this adjustment has to be made based on the purchases and the cost of goods sold for the period between the of the inventory and the closing day of the year. Now let us take some illustrations in this regard. <coughs> As on 31st March 2017, illustration 7, we are having some particulars as on 31st March 2017, that as on 31st March 2017, for that year inventory as on 1-4-2016 was this much, purchases uh, during the year, the manufacturing expenses during the year, selling expenses during the year, administrative expenses during the year, financial charges and sales during the year are mentioned here. It is also mentioned that the time inventory was valued as on 31st March 2016 itself, which is the value here 1,42,500. A sum of uh, 17,500 was written off on a particular item that was purchased for 50,000 rupees. And uh, so that item was purchased for 50,000 rupees but a sum of 17,500 was written off on that item. So basically the item was remaining at a price of uh, or a purchase price of let's say 32,500 rupees which is 50,000 minus 17,500. And then this item was sold during the year for 45,000. Now, apart from the transaction related to this item, the gross profit which was earned during the year was 20% on sales. So when we say the gross profit earned was 20% on sales, <coughs> it excludes this particular item, which was somehow written off to the extent of 17,500 from the opening inventory. So the concept involved here is that uh, when we have to take the 20% on sales gross profit into consideration, we have to exclude this particular item because it is an abnormal type of item. So abnormal type of items have to be discarded from the books of accounts in order that we can get at the correct valuation of the inventory based on the correct gross profit margin. So we we will what we will do is that from this 1,42,500 we'll reduce this item which was there at this value of 32,500 there. So this item of 32,500 is reduced or ejected or cut out from the opening inventory <coughs> and of course it will also be cut out from the sales because a sale of 45,000 is made on this item. So as you see, the abnormal item sale has been reduced from sale also. So we'll take a opening inventory of 1,10,000 after reducing this abnormal inventory item. 1,42,500 minus this abnormal inventory item. Value of inventory of 1,10,000. Then we add the, and in the opening inventory, and we go about adding the purchases and the manufacturing expenses. So we come to a figure of 10 lakh 22,500. And then in order to get at the closing inventory, 
we have to reduce the cost of the goods sold also or rather we have to add the cost we have to reduce yes we have to reduce the cost of goods sold after adding this amount of purchase and manufacturing expenses we have to reduce the cost of goods sold so that uh, we can get at the closing inventory so the formula which is being used here is the opening inventory plus the purchases plus the direct manufacturing expenses minus the cost of goods sold so in order to find out the cost of goods sold we take the sales figure as per the books and then we, we are reducing the abnormal item so what we are taking is the sales figure is take, we are taking the sales figure of 12 lakh rupees and since there is a gross profit margin of 20% on sales as it is mentioned 24% on sales we have to be careful profit is taken as 20% of purchase or 20% of sales or it is taken 20% of cost whatever it is you have to take that into consideration very carefully since this gross profit here is 20% of sales so we reduce the 20 we take 20% of the sale amount which comes to uh, that means 20% of 12 lakh which is 2 lakh 40000 and we reduce the gross profit to find out the cost of goods sold the cost of goods sold is the 9 lakh 60000 rupees and we add this, uh, we reduce this cost of goods sold from the figure of 10 lakh 22,500, and thereby we get the inventory as on 31st or closing inventory as on 31st March 2017. <clears throat> now let us see another illustration, which is called illustration 8. A trader was there who prepared his account on 31st March every year. But he could not take the inventory due to some reasons, unavoidable reasons. And he had to take it on 15th April 2017. So the inventory taking could be possible only on 15th April 2017. That is, took, it took, uh, there was a delay of 15 days. And on 15th April 2017, the total cost of the goods in his go down or the total valuation of the cost of the goods came to 5 lakh rupees. And uh, the facts are given here that for the period 31st March to 15th April, the sale was 4 lakh 10,000, which included some cash sale of 1 lakh. Purchase was 50,340. That included cash purchase of 19,900. The sales return was 10,000 rupees. And we are aware that the goods are sold by the trader at a profit of 20% on sales, not on the cost of the purchase. And we have to calculate the inventory as on 31st March 2017. So in this case, once again, we take the inventory that we have. Uh, as on 15th April 2017, which is 5 lakh rupees. And in that inventory, we have to add the cost of the goods sold during the period of 15 days. And then we have to reduce the cost of the purchases during the period of the 15 days. And So the, to, to find out the cost of goods sold, we have to take the sales and reduce the gross profit from it. Gross profit is 20% of sales and sales is 4 lakh 10,000 minus 10,000 because 10, minus 10,000 because 10,000 is a sales return. As we can see, 10,000 is a sales return. We are not much affected by whether how much is the cash sale or how much is the case here. We just take the sale amount, reduce the gross profit 20% of the 4 lakh or 20% of sales. We reduce the gross profit from the 
sale amount to get the cost of the goods sold and then we add the cost of goods sold to the inventory that we have achieved 15th april and we then reduce the purchases which were made during this period so this during the during the extra period purchases have to be reduced and the cost of the goods which were sold during the period of 10 days has to be added back to get the final inventory of 769660 now let us take one more example one more illustration which is called illustration 9 now inventory taking for the year ended 31st march 2016 was completed by 10th april 2016 So therefore, there is a delay of 10 days here, and the valuation of which showed an inventory figure of 16 lakh 75 thousand at cost on the completion date, that is 10th April. After the end of the accounting year and till the date of the completion of the inventory taking, we know that we have a sales for next year of 68,750, and the profit margin is 33. On three three percent on cost, that you can see the gross profit margin being given as thirty three point three thirty three percent, not on the sale but on the cost. Now purchases for the next year, that is those ten days, included an inventory amounted to. In the uh, uh, the purchases for the next year, which are already included. in this inventory which is taken of uh, of 10th april here we know that these purchases are included amounted to 90000 at cost less trade discount of 10% so the purchases are 90000 less trade discount of 10% and during this period goods were also added to inventory at the markup price of 3000 in respect of sales return so sales return was 3000 at the markup price of 3000 and after inventory taking it was found that there was a certain very old slow moving items costing 11250 which should be taken at 5250 to ensure the disposal to an interested customer because we uh, if we take that value of the very slow moving item at 5250 we can sell it sell it off to an interesting interested customer at that rate <laughs> now what happened that that due to the heavy flood certain goods which were costing 15500 were received from the supplier beyond the delivery date of the of the customer so the customer wanted them earlier but uh, heavy flood was there and so therefore goods costing 15500 could not be received by us in due time and as a result the customer did not take the delivery of those items of 15500 and the net realizable value of those goods was estimated to be 12500 on 31st march so <clears throat> these goods were costing 15500 to us there was a delay in receiving the goods due to the flood the customer refused to take the delivery of these goods therefore and uh, therefore they are lying in the inventory with us and therefore this the net realizable value of these goods was estimated to be 12500 on march so let us see in this case how do we calculate the how do we compute the value of the inventory for inclusion in the final accounts for the year ended 30th march 2016 so 
Now, let us see. First of all, we start with the value of inventory as on 10th April, and that is 16,75,000 given to us here. Thereafter, we have to add the, broadly speaking, we have to add the cost of the goods sold after 31st March. And then we have to reduce the purchases for the 10 days period. We have to reduce, we have to add the cost of goods sold for the 10 days period. We have to reduce the cost of the cost of the sales return. We have to reduce the loss on revaluation of slow moving inventories. And we have to reduce the reduction in the value amount of the default made. And uh, then on that basis, we get the value of the inventory. So to understand this, first of all, we have to calculate the cost of the goods sold after th 31st March. So we have a figure of 68,700. And to calculate the cost of goods sold, we have to take the value, we have to reduce the, the profit margin or the, or the profit from it, the gross profit. We have to reduce here, but gross profit is mentioned to be 33.33% on cost. But here, what has to be reduced is the percentage on sale. Because we have, we have the sale value of 68,750 for the 10 days period. So we know that 33.33% 33 33 on cost means 25% on the sale price. Therefore, we have taken here 25% of the sale price instead of 33.33% because 33.33% is on cost and therefore <coughs> profit should be 25% on sale price. And uh, so 25% of 68,750 comes to 17,190. And so we have reduced the gross profit from the sale to get the cost of the goods sold. So we have to, for the, in case of the inventory that is taken on 10th April, we add the cost of the goods sold at 51,560. And then we add up, we, we, we have to reduce the purchases for the next period of 10 days and we are seeing that <coughs> purchase is 90,000 but there is a, a discount of 10% so we reduce 10% from 90,000 we get a figure of 81,000 and therefore we reduce this net figure of 81,000 after trade discount. We also reduce the cost of the sales return. So we are seeing that uh, The sales return markup price is 3000 rupees. So since markup price is 3000 rupees, we have to take the, the cost price of the sales return. And therefore, the cost price of the sales return is taken at 2250 by reducing 25% of 3000. Again, just as we have reduced 25% here, so we have reduced 25% on the Sales return amount also 25% of 3000, which is 750 coming to 2250. Now, thereafter, <clears throat> it is being stated that there, there, there was some slow moving item which was costing 11,250, and uh, it should be taken at 5,250 to ensure disposal to an interested customer. So therefore, this loss of 6,000 rupees has to be accounted for. And therefore, this loss of 6,000 rupees is being accounted for by reducing from the valuation of the inventory. The 6,000 rupees we are arriving at by reducing 5,250 from 11,250. And thereafter, 
one more item has to be re reduced here because due to the heavy flood, uh, goods were costing 15,500 rupees and uh, we have to take the net realizable value of those goods at 12,500 rupees because respondent did not take them and therefore the value is reduced. So cost or net realizable value, whichever is lower, by that principle we have to reduce 3,000 rupees from the valuation and therefore we reduce minus 3,000 rupees and then finally we get a value of 16 lakh 34,000 rupees 310 as the value of inventory as on March 31. So this uh, year ended 30th March date is a bit misleading so it has to be read at 31st March 2016. Now let's see one more illustration. Now there are some details of the spare parts of Sri Ram Mills. Let us say that the spare parts were on 1 1 2016, the opening of inventory of spare part is nil. Then on 1 1 2016 itself, some purchase of the spare part has been made of 100 units at 30 rupees per unit. Then on 15th of January, so 50 units have been issued for consumption. On 1st of February, 200 more units are purchased at 40 rupees per unit. Then on 15th of February, 100 units are issued for consumption. And on 20th February, another 100 units have been issued for consumption. So we have to use the first in first out basis find out the value of the inventory of the spare parts as on 31-3-2016. So we are using a perpetual inventory method here. On 1-1-2016, the balance is still. On 1-1-2016, these 100 units are purchased for a rate of 30, giving us an amount of 3,000, giving us a balance of 3000 at the same rate. So this is divided into three parts, receipt, issues, issues and balance, as we have seen in another example earlier also. Wherever, wherever perpetual inventory system is followed. Then on 15th of January, we are issuing these 50 units. We are issuing these 50 units at the rate of 30 because this is the first in first out rate. As we are first following the first in first out basis, and uh, finally, after having issued 50, what we are remaining with is 50 more units. So 50 units are remaining at the rate of 30. Thereafter, 40, uh, 200 more units are purchased at the rate of 40. And on a first in first out basis, we have these 200 units are purchased here and uh, out of the 100 units 50 have been issued 50 are were remaining and 200 more are purchased here so these 200 units are written at the rate of 40 and 50 units earlier ones are written at the rate of 30. Now when these 50 units are issued on 15th February they will be issued first from the rupees 30 rate that was the earlier one first in then more 50 are issued they will be issued from this 40 rate on a first in first out basis another 100 are issued later on so on 15 february 100 are issued 50 of them are issued at 30 rupees rate 50 more are issued at 40 rupees rate based on the first in first out method and finally 100 more are issued at the rate of 40 and after this issue, we are having 50 units remaining of the 40 rupees rate. So 40 rupees rate, 50 units remaining, 50 into 40, 2000 rupees is the closing inventory in this case. Now, let's look at one more illustration. We have the details of a spare part 
of Sri Ram Mills, the same company. Opening inventory is nil. Purchases are made 1 1 2016, 100 units at 30 rupees per unit. And then on 15 1 2016, 50 units are issued for consumption. On 1 February, 200 units are issued for consumption. Again, 100 units on 15 February and 20, and 100 units on 20th February. Now we have to apply the weighted average basis here to calculate the inventory. So when we have to find out the weighted average basis, we have to keep in mind the, the, the number of units also that are being purchased. So we take on 1st of January 2016, there is a nil balance. On 1 1 2016, 100 units are purchased. And they are valued at the rate of 30 here. We are not going to use the first in, first out, or last in, first out here, or simple average. We are going to use the weighted average price method. So then, out of these 100 units which were purchased, which were valued at 30 rupees per unit, 50 units have been issued. So these uh, units will be issued at the rate of 30 because that's the only rate available at this point of time. And the remaining 50 units are therefore valued at rupees 30. Now what happens is that 200 more units are purchased at the rate of 40. So when this 200 more units are purchased at the rate of 40, we get a figure of 200 into 48,000 8, and we have a figure of 15 to 30, 1,500. Then we add up this 8,000 to 1,500. We come to 9,500 and we divide that by 250. So this 9,500 divided by 250 gives us a weighted average rate or weighted average price of rupees 38. It's just 9,500 divided by 250. Thereafter, this is the weighted average price and uh, at this price, initially 100 units are issued the same price and another 100 units are issued the same price. Remaining with us now are 50 units at the rate of 38, which gives us a valuation of 15 to 38, that is 1,900 on the weighted average price method. Now, having gone through the this chapter and having summarized this chapter in this particular session already, we have seen in this chapter five historical cost methods being discussed two non-historical cost methods being discussed also for inventory valuation. And of course, for take inventory, two inventory taking systems or inventory recording systems being discussed called the periodic inventory system and the perpetual inventory system. And of course, the comparisons between those systems have also been given. The specific circumstances in which those systems are used and particularly the cost methods which are used in specific circumstances they have also been brought to light. We have seen the cost of the goods sold formula. And there are some questions at the end of this chapter which we will include in the mock tests. So please prepare these questions very well and use them for your uh, revision of the chapter because revision is very important. Let me end by saying that there is a Harvard research which says that if you revise anything that you have studied today within 24 hours and then you make a second uh, revision of it within a week any time and finally if you make a third revision of that within a month then that particular aspect of that particular thing goes inside your mind and remains in your memory forever uh, to the extent of 90%. So, and if you don't follow the revision method of revising within 24 hours and then once more within seven days and 
one final revision within 30 days, then you are left with almost nothing, say 10% of it only. So all that effort goes waste in case the revision is not done. And the scientific method of doing revision is that you do revise once properly. The first revision has to be thorough and proper. Second revision and the third revision after seven days and within the period of 30 days can be a little cursory in nature also. But the first revision has to be very, very th thorough. So please revise and uh, we'll, our mock test will come to you to help you with the revisions also in order to uh, be sure about the revision aspect. So with those words, thank you very much for having attended today's session and uh, do attend the next session also today evening.